Hey everyone, this is uh, Kevin Vincent here at uh, Vertex, the uh, Mining the Abitibi Global Virtual Conference. We're going to get started our afternoon session here. Uh, afternoon for those of us that are here in uh, the eastern part of North America. Morning for those of you that are still out in the West and uh, who knows what time it is uh, around the world as we know that we have uh, participants uh, from around the world uh, dialing in today or logging in today for, uh, for this particular event. So we're gonna get started right on time in approximately 90 seconds. So thanks for joining us and we will be right back with the start of this afternoon session. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kevin Vincent, and I am the uh, senior contributing editor to Mining Life and Exploration News, which is a sister company of Vertex, our global web conferencing system that you are a uh, part of here today. This is our, uh, our, uh, our coming out party, if you will, for this uh, amazing technology uh, and assembling uh, some of the, the, the best mining companies, the best juniors and uh, suppliers. Uh, in the entire Abitibi Greenstone area, which is our focus of attention here today. So welcome to the Mining the Abitibi Global Virtual Conference. Now this event is uh, brought to you by a number of amazing companies who've invested in uh, today's event, including Mappy, including Lakeshore Gold, Kirkland Lake Gold, IM Gold in their Cote Gold operation. Canada Nickel, G4 Drilling, and so many others that, uh, uh, that uh, we have way too many to mention at the moment, so that's just a few. So we're going to kick things off this afternoon with another exciting uh, company that is just on the verge of doing some amazing things in this part of the world. Uh, if you thought this morning's sessions uh, were exciting, I think you're going to find this afternoon just as exciting, if not, uh, if not more so. So let's get things started this afternoon with Kevin Montgomery of Manita Porcupine. And uh, Manita is a company that has their fingers on a project right here in the Timmins Porcupine camp that uh, is, is quite exciting. Kevin, welcome to the platform and the floor is yours, sir. Thanks for the introduction, Kevin. And thank you for the opportunity to speak at Mining the, the Abitibi. I'm going to be talking to you about Manita Porcupine Mines and our new gold project in the eastern part of the Timmins Mining Camp. Uh, just a slide, a forward stating statements. Uh, I will be uh, having some forward uh, statements in this uh, presentation. Just uh, slide three. Uh, Manita Porcupine is one of the oldest mining companies listed on the TSX. It is the oldest mining company in Timmins. We started exploration in the camp in 1910 and produced 150,000 gold ounces of gold from 1938 to 1943 in the heart of Timmins. So let's fast forward to 2021. It has been a busy start of the year for Manita. In February, 2021, the company completed the acquisition of the Garrison project from O3 Mining to create a leading Canadian gold development company with 4 million ounces of gold in the indicated category, 4.4 million ounces in the inferred uh, category. This is one of the largest undeveloped gold resources in North America. It consists of both open pit and higher grade uh, underground resources. We have 2.8 million in the underground resource and 5.6 million in the open pit resource. Uh, the new project is a combination of the Golden Highway project of Manita and the previous garrison project of O3 uh, Mining, and it is now being called the Tower Gold Project. Just to show you where we are in, the, in relationship to Timmins, we're about 100 kilometers to the east of Timmins in the Matheson area. 
Uh, this, we're in an excellent um, gold producing camp. We have great infrastructure, Highway 101 East uh, runs just to the north of us. Um, we're also located on the pro prolific uh, Dester Porcupine uh, fault zone where all the major mines of the Timmins camp are located. In fact, we have 17 kilometers of strike length of the Dester Porcupine fault zone. So we have a, we're well positioned. We have a significant resource base. We're an established mining camp. Uh, we're one of the largest landholders in the Timmins camp now, and we have excellent potential to expand our resources. Uh, just a bit of uh, corporate information. We have 555 approximately million shares out. Uh, this has been ranging from 11 cents to 47 cents. We're currently sitting around 38 cents. Uh, but more importantly, we uh, have no debt, uh, debt and we have a cash position of uh, about $25 million in the kitty. Uh, our, our management and directors have a successful track record in both exploring, developing, and producing. Uh, our management team is led by Gary O'Connor, who is our CEO uh, and has been leading the team for over three years now. Um, we have uh, a new CFO, uh, Jason Intish, uh, and he's just joined the company uh, about six months ago. Our directors have been involved with a number of companies, O3 Mining, Osisco, Barrick, and Kinross. So we have the experience to develop. Um, so the benefits of our project consolidation with O3 Mining is that we're now, as I said before, one of the largest developed gold mining projects. We have a much larger scale project than originally envisioned in our recent PEA studies, uh, which will bring a significant uh, economic benefits uh, on the operational and development synergies. Uh, we're also located in the Timmins district where there are many large mining projects that are permitted. Our land position has also increased by 73%. So we have more land to find more resources. Uh, we also have a, a starter pit at Garrison, which outcrops the uh, gold mineralization. There's no uh, pre-stripping or anything required to it. Uh, this will uh, aid with our uh, underground and open pit resources on the Golden Highway project. Let's move quickly to, I'll give, I won't spend too much time. I am a geologist, but uh, I don't want to bore you too much. Uh, the significance of this slide is that this is our Golden Highway project. This is uh, the, in the blue hash is the garrison uh, project. And as you can see, the gray area is a band of uh, sediments in which most of our uh, gold deposits are located. We have over eight gold deposits now in, in the combined uh, property. Uh, starting down uh, as this was the trend, the sedimentary trend, uh, starting with the uh, 55 open pit. Uh, we have about a half a million ounces there. Uh, we're exploring right in here on the west way. Uh, we also have an underground resource at uh, southwest of uh, 2.7 million ounces resources combined. And we have another open pit here at Windjammer south of uh, 2.1 million ounces. All the uh, uh, projects on uh, other deposits, there, there's three of them on Garrison, are open pitable. So uh, just a quick summary of the combined resources. I won't spend too much time on, on this, but to say that, I, as you see here, the majority of the open pit uh, resources are on the uh, Garrison pro project. Uh, we also have significant at Windjammer South. So we have about 3.3 million ounces in the indicated and open pit. And we have an underground resource focused predominantly on the Southwest uh, deposit uh, where we have uh, 2 million ounces in both indicated and uh, inferred, uh, very good numbers. So we have a company uh, that's creating value with significant indicated resources. We have a good starter pit at uh, Garrison. Uh, we're aiming towards a production profile of over 200,000 ounces per annum. Uh, we have a lot of exploration potential, which we are uh, focusing on this year. Uh, metallurgy, uh, the ores from both the projects are compatible to conventional uh, process uh, field sheets. So it's looking really good. So just to look at, at our, uh, our 
2021 drill program, which is going to be 70,000 meters. We've currently uh, completed about 35,000 meters. Uh, we've been focusing on uh, the 55 infill and pit expansion. We're trying to expand the resources at uh, Westaway. Uh, and we're also trying to connect the, uh, east, um, the eastern part of uh, southwest towards the Windjammer South Pit in this area here. Uh, we do also have some targets that we're following up on on the halfway resorts uh, area. And we will be looking at uh, the Garrison Garcon uh, East Pit expansion and, and Garrison Underground in the um, future, in the next couple of months. Just looking at some results that we have, here's the um, Windjammer South Open Pit. And you can see that the halfway drilling has it in intersected some interesting gold uh, values, uh, 75 meters of uh, 0.95 grams per ton. And some, uh, so we're expecting to be able to, we're hoping to push this out. We have more drilling going on there uh, currently and trying to push out the Windjammer South Pit towards the um, east. We're also looking at expanding uh, the Windjammer South Pit towards the west and into the southwest uh, gap area. Here we've uh, uh, intersected some interesting values, 32 meters of 1.63 meters uh, and 4.6 meters of uh, two grams. Uh, so there is a potential of uh, also expanding to the um, uh, southwest on um, Windjammer South. Uh, this, these couple slides are just uh, valuation slides, uh, valuation per ounce of gold, as you, and the main shows the undervaluation of Manita relative to other uh, mining companies, uh, similar mining companies. Again, uh, we have a market cap of 168 million, while our peers have much larger uh, market caps. So we believe that we can uh, push that market cap up. up. Right now, uh, we are sitting at $16 uh, dollars US per ounce of ounces that we have evaluation wise. So we will be looking at uh, re rating the um, valuation of the company. Similarly here, uh, this was what we were before, uh, before market capitalization. And this is what our valuation, uh, which will include synergies, the garrison and gold highway projects uh, are. And then if we increase um, our valuation. Uh, this slide on the right hand side shows um, the resource rating potential. Finally, on the value upside potential, uh, we've created a um, significant development, gold camp development company with uh, a significant resource base. And as you can see, our resources with the consolidation uh, jumped from 5.5 to 8.4 million ounces. Also, uh, our peer uh, average is well below uh, our peers, and, and we believe we're undervalued in this case. Some plans and programs uh, coming up in 2021. I told you about the 70,000 uh, meters drilling that we will be doing uh, and the areas that we have, have been testing. Uh, we are also looking at uh, modeling the Southwest. Uh, there is some low grade surface stuff uh, that we're going to try and model into an open pit. We also uh, are going to be doing some additional test work on our new uh, deposits and resources. And finally, towards the end of uh, 2021, we hope to uh, put out an updated uh, resource estimation. Uh, and then we'll uh, expand into uh, 2022 with a expanded PEA. So as, we, as I've said, so far we've uh, hit the first uh, milestone of, of consolidating the acquisition of the Garrison Gold Project. We're halfway through our um, 70,000 meter program uh, and uh, we'll be finishing up that uh, into the uh, fall, uh, at which time we will be starting an expanded resource update and, and it's some additional uh, metallurgical work. So uh, in, um, at the end, uh, I would like to uh, thank everybody for uh, listening to my rambling presentation. And hopefully, if you have any questions, I have some time to answer them.
Thank you. Absolutely, Kevin. Uh, you know, what a great presentation for a great project uh, in, in, a, in a great part of the world to be able to go and look for, uh, for metals like gold. And I know that Manita Porcupine as a company has been around, uh, I think it's been around a couple of years, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, so we've been working on this project for about 40 years, but there's been a lot of hiatuses. Uh, and three years ago, we had a, a change in management and uh, looking at the new management came in and looked at the uh, resources and said, hey, we've got some high grade potential here. Uh, so uh, we've, we've been, we focused uh, on high grade uh, vein zones and came up with a 2.1 million ounce uh, resource at the Southwest deposit. And since then we've been uh, focusing on, we went back, we're going back to the open pit stuff and seeing if we can uh, upgrade and better constrain the ore zones at, in the pits. You know, there's so many people in the in the industry talk about a million ounces being a world-class uh, deposit and a world-class uh, mining operation. It's pretty clear with more than 2 million that, uh, you know what, you, you've really got something here that, uh, that has a lot of, uh, I'll call it life of mine potential. That's correct. Uh, we're quite uh, happy with uh, the uh, resources we have uh, and we're pushing uh, towards uh, mining them in the near future. Well, Kevin, thank you so much. Uh, you put together a really comprehensive uh, presentation today for uh, those of uh, uh, so the delegates to our conference today who may not know about Manita Porcupine uh, to fully appreciate just how exciting this project is and all the work that, uh, that you guys have done to, uh, to pull it all together, draw the right picture so that investors and uh, potentially suppliers and employees down the line, those are all good problems to have when you're gonna start looking at uh, hiring people and uh, pulling all those contractors together. And it'll be a, a welcome addition to the to-do list, no doubt for a lot of people that are associated with this project. Thank you very much, Kevin.